Good morning, Esther's crown. God's blessings. Good day. God's blessings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Good day. God's blessings. This is the day the Lord has made. New mercies, new day. Compassion that fails not. Everlasting kindness. Goodness from generation to generation. It's so encouraging to know his name, to know his word, to know his spirit. When we receive the gift of salvation, we are born again. Our spirit, born again. We talked about this a little bit yesterday about the kingdom of God. And, you know, I, I can remember when I was first saved and brought into salvation, I had no understanding about the inheritance that I had inherited. It was like somebody left me something that I had no idea what was left to me. My apologies. They're a little stirred up today because it's cold outside. Um, hold on one minute. Let me open that door real quick. Be right back. Right back. It'll give everybody a chance to sign on. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to leave them out for a minute to see if they're quiet. I don't know. One more minute. Let me see if I can get them. See if we can get them a little quiet. Blessings, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Blessings. Blessings, blessings. See how that goes. We'll let them bark if not. If they keep going, we'll let them bark. So, we were talking about the kingdom yesterday and how I was using an example of when I was first born again. What I was familiar with was what I was born into. So, this new experience happens. I, it's very tangible, very real, but the old mindsets were there. Like, I didn't feel like they, they were mine, what I used to do, everything like that, but like as far as sin went, but how I was raised, I, you know, I was familiar with English language, culture of America, so as I was explaining that, over time, years and years of studying and listening and teaching and leading and being led, I actually developed the knowledge of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. So, and I use the example, if we were to move to another country, another culture, nation, kingdom, if we went under the rule of another kingdom, say we left the United States and, and went somewhere else, then if we're going to stay there, we have to become, or we would become acquainted with the language, the food, the dress, the culture, the beliefs, so we'd be a part, you know, eventually belong to that kingdom if that's where we're going to live. So I was explaining that a little bit yesterday, and 
Um, and I believe it helps them um, to understand because when we're brought into this beautiful gift of salvation, you know, we're born again to the kingdom of God. And he actually, the word actually says the kingdom of God is now within us. And, and the elements, righteousness, peace, and joy, we have the governor, the Holy Spirit, we have the spirit of Christ, you know, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. So there's just this trinity of three the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of heaven, he, he said we actually live in an atmosphere of heaven. Remember, the, the word says we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So there's a realm, an atmosphere that our spirit is in now. And if to the natural, trying to see that, trying to see the supernatural with our natural eyes is not helpful as when... You know, our mind's been renewed. What I said about the kingdom is living somewhere and taking on that culture, taking on that understanding. So, you know, you can, right now I could hear all about Brazil and I could hear about how their food is and their dress and their language. But if I'm not actually living and dwelling there, then I just have a informational hearing of. So we don't want to be like that in God. We want to take that salvation and everything he's done and just keep growing and keep learning in him so we talked about that yesterday good morning god's blessings i had to settle the dogs down there very rowdy today <laughs> i was thinking it's the uh, the weather so when we say the, the day brings with it new mercies that's not something we're just saying that's the word every day brings new mercies so we stake claim to that because that's our spiritual in inheritance that's what god does in the new day, and there's scripture that says, this is the day the Lord has made. Well, we know man didn't make this day. Man's done, we've done what's in the day, the buildings and the job functions and the stores and everything like that. But the actual day God made. So we say, this is the day the Lord has made. Um, then we, we come into it. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So no matter what the day brings, what that's saying is, I'm going to appreciate what you, what you made, God what you made and some people may have a harder time saying that than others but when we learn the language we become appreciative of god our hearts open up i always that spirit of expectancy like that's what i look for is that spirit of expectancy like a child on christmas or a mother giving birth to a baby or starting the first day of school or the, the new day on the job you know landing that position or going away to college like there's just this expectancy or somebody coming to visit you know um the seasons just yeah that's what we want to live in that's what god wants us to live in and and he doesn't dismiss the hard things we go through like chastising us or something because we have harder times saying i want to rejoice in this day when we're going through something hard it's not like that it's developing the nature see the kingdom of god developing a response to know what we've been given because there is healing in the mercy mercy forgiveness brings healing you know there's um forgive in forgiveness there's a a deliverance when somebody said to me the other day i can't forgive myself and i said to them i understand that so like you know we we can for, say oh the bible teaches me to forgive so i'm going to forgive all my loved ones i'm going to forgive the offender i'm going to you know, forgive this nation and these leaders and everything else, but then we could sit still feeling bound by something. And that's where it's at. Like, when people say, I can't forgive myself. I, In my own walk with God, in my own fellowship with other believers, leaders even, what I have learned is even after the release of forgiving people around us, so many of us don't realize because that we need to invest in ourselves like we are worthy that god wants us to be set free you know we're sometimes we're we're the prisoner and it's because we haven't forgiven ourselves we haven't like said it's okay that we made that mistake you know it, and here's the thing like i think we fear that a little bit because we've met people that keep repeating the same mistakes and say they're sorry but they do nothing about it to change that's a different thing altogether than us forgiving our own self like really forgiving so i would say do an internal search on that a just in-depth 
like an ex do it what they call that an excavate or you know going down into the caverns of the soul going into the you know the clefts of the rock the hard place down into the deep of deep sea diving to the lower parts of our life and just see if there's anything in there because there's such a freedom that comes when we forgive ourselves you know sometimes we get bound up with we didn't serve god when we could have or should have or or I tell people, this is a biggie. I'm going to put this out there because this is a big thing. A lot of people, we do this. Hurting people hurt people. And, and oftentimes, even defensive people end up hurting people. So even if, they've been, even if I've been healed, but I haven't um, like been revived in that area, regenerated or something, then I can hurt somebody through defensiveness and... The last thing we want is our words to be harsh or things that we, the last things we did in somebody's life were not acceptable to us. Like we can't do, we really can't do anything about how another person thinks it's not acceptable because they're, oh, their balance of us, the way they judge us or the way they hold us to standards may not even be something achievable with us. But for us, you know. The last thing, if it's something, and then they pass away, or something happens to them, or they move away, then, you know, the enemy likes to keep us bound in that. And that person's gone on, another marriage, you know, on into heaven, you know, left, whatever, another country. And then for us, if we have not let go of our part, then we, then the enemy, our, even our own thought life, wants to keep us in bondage to that. So these are just some things like about letting go, about letting the kingdom of God, that righteousness, that peace, that joy, accepting the mercy of the new day. Today, brand new mercies. And it's not that we can take, so like a lot of people blame Christians like in prison. Oh yeah, they get born again. They have to. That's not necessarily the truth. Even in death, life and death circumstances, when we hear somebody was raised off the deathbed from drug use or, you know, whatever, prostitution or anything like that, and then they they change their life and they live on. And, you know, some people in their mind, the natural mind, trying to reason that out as, well, um, they had to or they didn't have anything else and it's an illusion and things. So there's just so much out there. There's so much out there, but there's... God is real. So I'm going to lead, this leads me into this, this morning. I always share with how God gives me what he gives me, or I try to hear um, for the word or how God starts my morning off. So I didn't realize how late it was when I woke up because I was up late last night. I couldn't sleep on and off up. And then finally I must have went into a deeper sleep earlier in the morning. And I didn't realize what time it was. So I kind of did my normal routine in the morning and then I, I realized, oh, wow, it's, it's close to Esther's crown. It's mm -hmm. close to us getting on and praying and coming into that place of unity and fellowship. Mm -hmm. And I was in the kitchen and very clearly, like I felt, let me say how it started with me. The Holy Spirit began to, the only way I can explain this right now that would make sense to you as a listener, to us, he started to stir about like, you know, if you hear your kid you know, stirring about in the room or your husband or your wife, somebody's stirring about when they first wake up. Okay, so he started stirring about in me. And I knew he was wanting to do something. Not so much I was trying to premeditate it, anything like that. And then I felt like this, just my heart. You know how you feel in your heart of your, of your soul? Like, I felt it begin to just embrace this invisible happening that almost was going to lead me to cry like I felt like okay you want me to go into the day I felt this just want to cry feeling not in a sad depressed way but just in a just an emotional way and then I started to hear this song very loudly in my heart um and I have not heard this song in a while maybe well maybe I heard it recently but I hadn't heard it in a while since then um, God of the City by Chris Tomlin, and it started playing loudly in my heart, like inside of me, internally, the Holy Spirit's moving about, I just know there's this stirring, like when, you know, somebody starts moving in the 
the beginning of the day when there was no sound and all of a sudden, this, you know, there's movement. So there's this moving going on and there's this, I just want to cry, but not in a depression, not in an elated joy, nothing like that, just in an emotional place, not thinking of anything. And then the song starts playing. So I went ahead and I sat down. That's why I, I decided to go ahead and submit to that, yield to that song before I got on here because I do believe they would mute that. There's certain songs and certain artists that they do. You have to have the rights to their music. So I didn't want to take a chance of that, but and it wasn't time for Esther's Crown yet. So I sat down and I listened to it. And the anointing of, the, of God, the presence, just the ministry and my emotions, mind, will, everything was just yielded to what God wants to do in our cities, with our families, with the people around us, you know, and in our nations, in the kingdoms of the world, and just what he wants to do. And it's not anything outside of the box, because even in the box, we know this is God's will to heal to save, to set free, to restore, to bless, you know, for miracles to come. So these are just in, in the normal what God does and what God uses us to do. So it wasn't like it was something like that. It was just the presentation of a brand new day with the Holy Spirit um, ushering in this mandate of he's the God of the city. He's the God of the nation. There's no one like our God. There's nothing. And see, that's the thing. Like, I believe that God is saying to us, when our affections are on a person or on a something we own or possess or a career, or, you know, whatever it is in that, that place, it's not that God doesn't want our attention there, but when it has our affections, then that can become our God. And we do need these reminders that God is the God of the city he's the god of the nation you know there's no one like him and why is this so important because god only disappoints us based upon our circumstance and situation and how we see him so if my husband is my god or if my kid is my god or you know there is idolatry like a form of idolatry or my car. I've seen people groom their car. Like, <laughs> I was like, they're waxing it again. They just wax it. I mean, they pay special detail to the car. And I'm not coming against it. I'm just saying these are forms of worship. These are forms of idolatry to where it's one thing to steward over something. It's another thing. Like somebody allowed a divorce to come into their home because they didn't want to give up their, their home. To move away with their spouse. They loved their home that much. I mean, I couldn't even believe it. They loved their home that much. So they allowed a divorce. A divorce to come with kids, with children, with m several years of a marriage. They allowed a divorce because they would not move from the house and from their family. And I, I just could, I couldn't believe it. Because it wasn't that, oh, thus saith the Lord. God doesn't want me to do it. And my spouse isn't hearing. They were so attached to the worldly possession of the house. So there's things like that. So for us, what I felt God was like, just in the song and just giving him reverence. There's no one. And when we put him in that place, when we learn how to position him that way, where he has full trust he has all of us then see we don't like some of us and, and some people and maybe and even me in the past but we um are we know god based upon our the people around us our affections circumstances what we own what we possess like even joy you know, if, if somebody's laughing all the time, then we're like, oh, they're a joyful person. You know, if somebody um, is quiet all the time, they're a peaceful person. Those things aren't necessarily so. I've met some quiet people that are very um, disrupted inside. Like, they're scared of everything, but they're just quiet. So, you know, we can't... 
we cannot discern and judge God and who God is and how he is based on the things and the people in our life. There's evidence, yes, but if we're going to know that there's no one like God and we're going to actually know he didn't bring COVID, he doesn't inflict us with sickness, he doesn't break up marriages, especially to bring somebody else into the marriage while somebody's already married. I mean, there's so many things that the mind, the natural mind, can um, like PowerPoint on based on a lack of God being where God needs to be in our hearts and lives. And I'll tell you, that when we, have, when we position God where it is that God truly belongs in our affections, mind, will, soul, emotions, even physical body, when we position that, and how, why do I say physical body? Because when we take communion, we're not taking that into an emotional realm. It can be emotional, but we're receiving it into our body. Like we're receiving communion into our physical body. We're saying we receive what you've done for us, God, in body form. So there's just a lot. Um, but I did want to say why, how I got these verses this morning. And for me, I, I learned to, to put God first, to give my life to God, to give my my daily plans to God. And sometimes interference comes with those plans, unexpected things, or I have to be somewhere, or somebody canceled something, or somebody needs me. So sometimes that happens. But here, even when that happens, allow God, this is the day the Lord has made, allow God into that plan. Just say, okay, God, I didn't expect this. Come, walk with me. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you forsake you. I'll never leave you. So here I am, God. I invite you in to navigate this situation, this day. Come in. Come into the day. Come into the problem. Come in, God. Let me discern your near. Let me know that you're going to bring your answer. You know, this personal relationship is really big to God, and he wants it to be big to us. Personal Savior I think about this when he was in the garden and it says he was sweating. It was like blood that was coming out of his pores. The sweat drips were as blood. And he asked, this is, this is how I see it a lot of times. He asked if this cup can pass God, this cup that he was about to drink of, which was death on the cross, you know, crucifixion being led to this, this death and he's like if this can pass God father he said father if this can pass and then he was like it doesn't even say where he had a dialogue sentence he just cuts himself off with that and the words and says nevertheless not my will but yours be done and when I think about that like for myself especially when I'm taking the cup of communion I think about that and if this is what scripture comes to me, is while we were yet sinners, Christ died. So we were, we had done nothing different. We hadn't received him as savior of the world. We meaning all of us, like there is no ulterior uh, motive or, or something we have to do. You know, it's full acceptance. It's fully paid. And that, that is a hard thing to understand because we won't do it. It's not in human makeup. It's not in us to do that. Like, think about it. Think about it. Like, even those who risk their lives on the front line and everything, it's not so much that they're actually, like, set out to do it for the entire world for, like, criminals and injustices and that's not it. It's a cause that they do it for or a person that they love or, you know, it's not for every single person in the earth. And so, yeah, so that's kind of how I see it sometimes. I'm like, okay, Lord, like you, this was so, such a big event. And yet while we were sinners, you died. And that makes me see things differently. Like in the day, his mercies 
every day. Compassion that fails not. Loving kindness for generation to generation. That means if we can't get it right and he tarries and another generation comes in, they are going to receive his loving kindness regardless of how wicked and evil we've been. And I think that's where a lot of people can't understand that because they're just like, why doesn't God do this? Why doesn't God do that? Well, I don't know about you, but when I was deep in sin, I needed this. Hold on one minute, please. Just one minute. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to pray here in just a minute. Stay with me. Stay there just one minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was early. Sorry about that. I didn't want... It's been raining here, and um, our box of books just got dropped off for our course coming up. Oh, yay. Yay, yay, yay. I ordered... Um, <laughs> it's a blessing. I ordered... This doesn't normally happen, just to let you know. The mail doesn't usually come till later, and uh, the mail lady came early to drop this box off. I ordered books for our upcoming course that we're taking on Saturdays, and they just got here, and it's been raining lately and misty, so I didn't want to leave them out there. So God is good. He's for us. If he be for us, then who can be against us? Everlasting kindness, generation to generation. What was for Abraham and Sarah and Elijah and Moses and Lot? He's the same God. Yes, woo-woo, God is good. They came. I was like, Wow, that was fast. I just ordered them the other night. And I said, God, let them be here by Saturday. And there they are early, before mail even comes, just out there by the gate waiting for it. Oh, thank you, Father. See, expectancy. Expectancy. Our God reigns first thing in the morning. It's Monday, new week, new day, new month. Oh, my goodness. New month, November. Beautiful, All Saints, All Saints Day, I think it in November, the whole, oh, what a beautiful time, what a beautiful time, November, and Monday, new month, new day, new week, new mercies, new beginnings, fresh starts, God, the Holy Spirit playing the song, you're the God of the city, greater things are yet to come. Greater things are yet to be done in this city. Greater things. And I believe we heard that on Friday night. I had not heard that song in a long time. Greater things. And there is no one like our God. See, expectancy. Expect that healing. Expect that situation to change. And I've met people that expected for, gosh, five, six years or more without seeing anything, and then suddenly, suddenly it happened. Yes, yes, and yes, Lord. Healings, new days, new beginnings. You know, when we praise Him in the storm, see, our victory is in our praise. I mean, that's a weapon. That's an arsenal. That's our arsenal. Our victory is in our praise. When we refuse to quit or not praise Him, 
when we say, no, I am not going to sit back and deny my God his rightful place in my heart, in my affections. He loves me. While I was yet deep in sin, while we were in sin, Christ died for us, for you, for me. That thought keeps coming to me that in that garden, as he was sweating what appeared to be drops of blood, while he's sweating that, he actually gets to that place within his own self where he says, Father, if this cup can pass, and then he just cuts him his own sentence off. He's, he's just, if this cup can pass, Father, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And I believe when we answer him that way and we respond that way in a broken relationship or marriage or hostile situation or environment or changes coming to our, our health or finances, when we respond in, in that place of adoration, of respect for him, of knowing, knowing he's the one true God, not the people around us, not our possessions, not the reports we get, not the news stations, not any of it, but God, God, no one like our God in the face. He's the same God in the valley as, as he is in the mountain. Some people know how to praise him when they're on top of that mountain and the, the skies are clear and everything else. But when they get in that valley, they just, they walk around and just deny him or try to rustle up an answer. Dude, he wants to be the God. Remember in the valley, the shadow of death was there and, and his rod was there and his staff was there and they were comforting that place of walking through that situation and there was a table prepared there. I mean, and mercy and goodness were there in that valley. All of that was there. There's a book I read years ago and um, Hind's Feet in High Places and that it's an allegory about that very place, that situation, you know, that he is there. He's there. He wants to introduce himself to the comfort. What did he say? I will send the comforter to them. They were mourning. They were grieving. They, you know, they lost the Savior. They were walking with the Christ, the Messiah, the one prophesied. The Son of God, Son of Man, they're walking with Him, and then He's no more. He's taken away. You know? That's what Mary was like. Where have you taken my Master? Where have you taken my King, my Prince? When she was in the tomb, where have you taken Him? And the gardener was there, which was Him. He was the gardener. The gardener. Oh, Jesus. Okay, let's read this. Thank you, God. Thank you for that, Lord. John 14. He's the God of our city. He's the God of our family, of our house, of our nation, of his church. He's the head of the bride, the groom, the husband, the wife, the children. He's the head of everything. He's supposed to be the head of our relationships. So much in the word. Power packed with information for us to grow, to succeed, to overcome. Even when he doesn't take something away. This is what I learned. Even when he doesn't change something or take something away or right away or if something's progressive or whatever, he wants us to be intimately known, known, to know him and to be known by him. So there's just this place of just supping. He said, I knock at the door. If anyone open, I will come in and sup. S-U-P. I will come in and sup with that person in the heart. He's talking about inside of us. Inside of us where doubt, unbelief, fear, rejection, past mistakes, disease, sickness, loss of thoughts, re, you know, neglect, daydreaming, where all of that is. Jesus himself, the spirit of Christ, that's his desire to come in. Just come in. Yeah, he's such a good, good father. All right. John 14. Thank you for letting me share. And this came out of this morning with the Holy Spirit. 12 through 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. 
and greater works than these you will do because I go to my Father and whatever you ask in my name that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son if you ask anything in my name I will do it and as he was talking to them the reason he could say those statements and the reason we can live in that spiritual application, the word is a lie. The reason for that is, it's because they were so adorned with him. Like these were the disciples, these were his apostles. They were walking so close that he knew that what they asked, like James says, the reason you don't have or I don't have people, we ask amiss. There was no asking amiss. They, you know, they knew how to pray. He taught them. He taught them chapters before this. He taught them how to pray. You know, miles. Let me say miles. So get out of the book. And miles before that, when they asked, we do not know. Teach us how to pray. So he taught them, and he teaches us how to pray. And we so he said also think of this when they when he um, returned and and came to them in bodily form and he said touch me am i a ghost feel me i'm i'm hungry too give me something to eat and he stood there you know and he actually told thomas in, in front of them the other disciples he said blessed are those he was telling thomas you believe because you you saw me because you were able to touch me he said blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believe blessed we're blessed. We believe without being in the in the years he walked the earth as a physical man. We believe in him without seeing that. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Amen. He's got so much more for us. So when we ask, this is it. When we're so connected, when we've learned how the Spirit would have for us to pray, when we've we get up and we're like, this is your day, God. When we realize new mercies, there's so if we have to lay hold of a new mercy, like because something happened, like we could not control something we said, we slipped up, we made a mistake. Because when we love him more, then we, we go into that covering, into that like shadow of the shelter of the wings in our place of being undone, crucified in Christ. And we go in there and we're like, Lord, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to do that. I don't know how to control this thing. I don't know how to stop this thing. And there is this relationship that starts to develop in that place where we grow and we increase, see greater things. There's no one like him. And then we, as we grow, growing in grace, as we grow in the truth of the kingdom, as we grow in him, maturing, then we're able to give out to others. Like he said, if your salt loses its flavor, what good is it? If your light is hidden under a bush, what good is that? So he's going to bring these things out as we spend time with him, as we, you know, position him as the, the, the master of the house. You know, husbands and wives are supposed to submit to Christ. So Christ is the master of the house. See, he's the, he's the owner of the marriage. He's the owner. He's the leader of the household. Amen. He's the king of the kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, God, that we know that time spent with you is precious. It's valuable. It brings in answers, rewards. <laughs> it signs, seals, and delivers our safe arrival into the day, into the plans you have, knowing we never go it alone. For those that have a hospital visit or have a doctor's appointment, God, that they're not alone. For the, uh, our brothers and sisters, our belief, the believers, our fellow believers, God, for them today, whatever they're facing, if it's funerals, if it's, again, doctor's office, if it's new jobs or having to shut down businesses or broken homes or divorces God they're facing things hard whatever it is losses of loved ones and learning news they didn't want to have to learn today we pray they be strengthened 
strengthened by the sword of the word, strengthened by the prayers of us, God. We pray for them. We pray for our brothers and sisters right now, young and old, newborn and just walking as an elder in your kingdom. We pray for those leaders in the church. We pray for those that are just born again, that have a long way to grow in you. We pray, God, for each one that's facing something that's going to challenge the faith the confession of what they believe. God, strengthen us, strengthen us, the supernatural strength of who you are, your presence, your spirit, one another in the love. They will know we belong to you by the love we have for one another, God, that you would raise us up to speak that word of comfort, to have those words of encouragement, to know when to rebuke somebody. God, right now, balance us, arrest those areas that are just speaking out of free will or or just uh, freedom of not knowing or ignorance or unlearned things and make us the hands and feet. You said the harvest is, is just ripe, it's ready, it's plentiful, but the laborers, pray the laborers, we believe that's for today. We believe that this falling away of the church during 2020 is yet to be recovered in the marketplace, in the highways and byways, God. We believe, Father, that you want to speak to lost souls and bring them in. We believe that you want us, God, to visit the orphans, to visit the widows, to go into those places places, Lord, to be the hands and feet, to apply for the jobs, to open the businesses, to start the ministries, to go out into the mission fields, to answer the callings, to show up every week into a church and pray for those that are standing there, into the tent revivals, into the city, to go and sign up for volunteering in places with hospice and children's ministries and and, and daycares and social workers to just volunteer as aides and to go in and set our feet and to get online and use this this mode of transportation for your glory to post scriptures every day god to pray over people's facebook accounts or twitters or to make connections across the world to be able to pray for somebody or to be prayed for god we believe that you have so much more you're the god of the cities you're the god of the nations greater things we believe what you have said that as the days get evil and the falling away happens and but you'll secure us a safety belt that you're going to put that belt of truth just lock, lock it in for us just strap us in god and cause us not to lose our way we believe what you've said that we will not be amongst those that fall away that backslide that that deny you God but you are raising up this army that's going to prophetically prophesy in your name that's going to go and lay hands on and deliver that is going to receive the mandate to be the lights and lamps the witnesses to be the testifiers to lead others to lead a nation if so be it that you'll raise up more like Billy Graham's and and different ones Catherine Coleman's and Amy McPherson's female leaders and male leaders John Lake God those that just set their hearts Charles Stanley preaching the word God that as that gener as this generation transitions into those that are new and those that are younger and fresher that we will not lose it though the days be evil you're pouring out your spirit that will be part of the lineup that will receive the calling through the dream the vision the nighttime hour that will be strengthened by one another encouraged bringing hope lighting lamps god you've given us a mandate you've given us authority you said you are my ambassadors go into the earth make this disciples proclaim the good news lay hands on the sick deliver cast out operate in signs miracles and 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 wonders open heavens reveal my plan preach my word with passion with fire with zealousness with knowledge with understanding god right now i pray that the eyes of our understanding across your people be opened yeah suddenly as ahas as they're reading where they couldn't see i pray an aha moment i pray hearts be mended souls be revived 
minds receive your mind, the same mind that was in our Lord and Savior, being unto us sound minds, generational curses, being broken in Jesus' name, uprooted, nothing but blessings, strength in the feeble knees, strength in the hands, declarations, new days, believing you when we can't see, not changing our minds in the face of adversity, not running and hiding, but coming out, not hiding in four walls, wearing our t-shirts, loving you more, signing on the signature line that we believe in one marriage covenant. We believe in the agreement of what you have said in your word. We have believed that you are the one true God. We proclaim this into the nations of the earth that are serving other gods, that are being terrorized and victimized and lied to. We just arrest this sexual trafficking to children and adults right now. We say no more, being ex and it will be exposed, and God will bring in vigilantes in the spirit, angels to war, mighty angels, that those that are terrorizing will be confronted by heaven's host, Yes, God, legions and armies from heaven, us here, foot soldiers on this ground, horse riders and heavenly hosts, in the mighty name of Jesus, released into the earth, north, south, east, and west, small to great, poor to rich, newborn to senior passing over, woods, valleys, jungles, homes, businesses, marketplace, governments, courthouses, prisons, jails, hospitals, doctor's office, orphanages, every place, God, camps, every place, God, ocean to ocean, shore to shore, valley to valley, mountain to mountain, everything that has breath, our voiceless animals being vindicated for abuse, for neglect, God, raise us up, Lord Jesus, in the mightiness of your name, God, hide us, cover us, Lord, your agents, your agents in the field, your agents in the marketplace, God, let us be those hands and feet, teach us when to speak and when not to, praying prayers of faith that raise the dead off of the hospital beds, that raise it, we come against those sicknesses and diseases, we pray cures, cures. We pray that pharmaceutical agenda of greed to move out of the way that the resources of the, of the earth, the wealth, God, even the wealth of the wicked will be placed into the hands of your people and that this generation will be stewarding well, God, will be wealth increasers, will enlarge territories, mission fields, will find money, Lord, manna, provision, no hungry stomach, no thirsty mouth, no hungering and thirsting, none of it, God, not for food, all famine being recovered by your provision, generous givers, life changers, water walkers, food, suddenly food, finding things, being supernaturally filled till we can get to them, God. No one starving, no one thirsting to death, and that you will put that hunger and thirst for these kind of prayers in us, for the belief that we need to follow your word, to look to righteousness, to believe you in truth, God. Your mandate is still the same. Your word is still the same. You change not. You're the God of the city. You're the God of the nation. You are the God, the great I am from Genesis to Revelation. You're constant. You remain you do things great miracles you change not your tender mercies your loving kindness your rebuke your justice everything is the same what you do is pure who you are is righteous you're the one true God made in the image of you we stand here in the likeness Pour into us all that you have, God. Be, let us be faith builders in our own soul, in our heart, desiring what you have, not given over to the appetites of our flesh or given over to the world's passions, but sold out and set apart for you, God. Prodigals coming home, lost souls being one, waywards and strays 
finding that highway of holiness, repenting, outcasts coming forth, women proclaiming your great love, men surrendering to who you are as a bride in respect, in reverence, in honor, submitting and surrendering all of us children obeying in the Lord, obeying their parents, new mandates, we trust you, friendship and marriages, prospering in the homes, God, cause our enemies, you said you would cause our enemies to be at peace with us, that you could, you, you may bring miracles, you bring beauty where there was ashes, joy where there was heaviness, we praise you. We're not going to worship anything that is less than you. You are our God. The one true God across the nations, across your creation. Everything that has breath. Those unborn babies coming forth, God. God, help us to stand as voices, as trumpets. Help us to know we can march around walls. That we can escape. We can escape places, God. That we can even lay down our lives for you, God. The strength that we need. Bless our military. Bless their families. Bless our police departments. Bless those, our security officers, frontline workers in the hospitals, in the fire departments, in the neighborhood watches, in the schools, the teachers, the leaders, God, into the janitors of those that just clean, God. Help us to go into the earth. Angels, take up vessels like strangers getting coming forth. Fill the earth. Assign to each one of us, God, everything you have. Everything. We're your lamps, God. We're oiled up, suited up. We have our keys. We're dressed, God. We're here for you. We will not fail. We will not fall apart. We will not sit by the sidelines. We're not going to be spectators. Partakers. Partakers in the chambers. In the secret place. In the holy of holies. Partaking of your holiness. Partaking of your goodness. Co-heirs. Joint heirs. 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 Oh, Jesus, if we would just know the truth, all of us, and know it and teach it to our children. That's your command from Old Testament to New Testament, that we would teach the children, that we would not forbid them to come, that we would not deny them access into the purity of your presence, of who you are, God, that we would teach them your word and your ways. Thank you, God. Bless each one, every cry every prayer, every need, all of heaven's assignments, agendas, blueprints. Raise us up, your army, God, your army of soldiers, heavenly hosts and leaders in this earth that discern. Yeah, give us more discernment. Pour into us. I pray right now, discerning of spirits, discernment, God, into the spiritual realms, atmospheres, into warfare, into the word, into the fruits, the gift, the fruit of the spirit, the multiple blessings, the gifts that you have, nine times nine, God, for us, Lord, bless going in, bless going out, seven times return for what's been stolen. Oh, we, we just pray and prophesy and proclaim that, that the enemy has to give back to us, we don't have to go get it. It will be delivered seven, the number of perfection, delivered seven times, return, restoration right now to us, right where we're at. It'll come, it'll find us, it'll overtake us for where he deceived us, for where he wronged us or tricked or broke something or, or violated in the mighty name of Jesus. The return to us because it's so it's written. It has been written that it will be so. We thank you, Jesus. Multiply that blessings, favor going in, favor with our neighbors, favor on the job, favor God. Cause our the wealth of the wicked to be released into the hands of your people. Land titles, paid off cars, 
resources, homes, stewarding well. Here we are right now, God. Here's the talents, Lord. Forgive us where we've shortchanged or fallen short. We invite you to teach us how to steward well over these talents. God, that you can make us rich in you. That the wealth that can come. Yeah, that's what you said. The willing and obedient would inherit the good of the land. That's the wealth that he has stored up. Wealth here in this earth. That the earth has to respond. That was the authority, the power that he gave Adam and Eve and, and others as they walk the earth. Adam, where, I mean, Abraham, wherever your foot lands, that is yours. Look upon the stars, so shall be your children. Look upon the sand, so shall be the nations. In your name, Abram, in your name, Sarah will conceive past the time of conception. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for miracles, for divine encounters, for your presence being with us, for your revealing, for wisdom, for increase, for generational inheritance, for the blessings, for forgiveness, for repentance. We just call forth a mighty revival of repentance, tears, change of direction, change of hearts, change of minds, prospering, blessed, soul food, God, mind, will, spirit, soul, God, emotions, will, intellect, subconscious, everything, repenting, having a full washing and cleansing of a holy repenting unto a, an upright man unto an upright woman unto one who has received the inheritance that you have given righteousness peace joy provision daily bread increase favor new starts new beginnings forgiveness healing merciful grace abounding love generational transference of wealth and riches from the generations past the inheritance of blessings of anointings of mantles of double portions of fullness of the godhead of walking with visitation of protection ring of fire crown of thorns yes wrapped around us the royal diadem we are the gems we are the stones in the crown of who he is of all of heaven's callings and degrees we agree today with the answers into this earth into this life we receive of the goodness of the bountiful blessings of the favor of the promises from generation to generation no gap in those that belong to you just continuing and constant that them without us would not be perfect that us without them would continue on thank you servants of the most high god thank you lord jesus for your blood covenant cross mandate in our lives being born again that you didn't leave us as we were that you didn't leave us asleep in the garden that you woke us wake up sleeping one wake up O oh thou that sleeps wake up the kingdom of god is at hand has come near your near your dwelling place has come nigh the hand of healing the hand of grace the finger of of miracles come near has come nigh draw near to me and i will draw near to you that's his word says the lord draw near to me and i will draw near to you your comforter my best friend our teacher our seal yeah, the guarantee, sealed in the forehead, mighty king, worshiping body of believers, coming forth in the glory of who you are, God. Thank you, Jesus. There's no one like our God. There is no one like you. There is no one, God. Greater things because of who you are in the last days. Evil, perilous times will come. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit. In the last days, 
my glory will be seen upon my people. In the last days, I will shorten time for the elect's sake, that they may endure what's to come in the earth. In the last days, the two witnesses will walk in the end of end times. Thank you, Jesus. In these days, in the twinkling of an eye, change, transformation, we are your witnesses. Lord, right now I pray, we pray in unity that the revelation, the revealing of you, Jesus, the word made flesh in us, manna, we that not, not as the wilderness wanderers ate, but the bread of life, you, God, that came from heaven, that we will eat in fellowship with you in such a way that our eyes will be open like the two disciples. Didn't our hearts burn, that our hearts will burn with passion for your word, that our eyes will be open. And just as John, the revelation, the signs, the seals, the understanding, we pray revelation of understanding as we read the word, that they will come alive off the pages, though written in black and red. We will understand them in truth and grace. We will understand them in spiritual enlightenment, wisdom, knowledge, and revelation from Adam all the way into the coming of Christ, from Genesis to Revelation, every line upon line, precept upon precept, every written truth, every mystery in heaven, all that belongs to us, we receive it today by faith. By grace, by faith in you, God, we receive what rightfully belongs to us, God. And we will not be exalted above that which is your seat. It's your glory, God. We Right now, we just throw ourselves at the mercy seat of who you are, seeking our own forgiveness. Seeking our own forgiveness and the forgiveness for our loved ones, our family, this generation, your people, the backsliders, the haters, the enemies. We seek your forgiveness right now. We lay at the foot of who you are to obtain this mercy for us and all who we stand for and all who have said yes to you, God. Yes, Jesus, we're here. Forgive us, God, merciful King. Yes, Lord, lead us in righteousness, govern us in truth. You are worthy, King Jesus. Hallelujah. King Jesus, all of heaven shout your name, oh glory. Come in us and we proclaim, yes, sing louder. Yes, God, King Jesus. All of heaven shouts his name, yes, all glory. Thank you, Jesus, yes, our King, yes, God. Hallelujah, praise his name, glory to you, answering every prayer, meeting every need, being glorified. We shout your name, being healed and recovered by your wounds. We are healed, whole, mind, spirit, soul, and body, miracles, signs, and wonders, deliverances, healings, whew, drug addictions, breaking off. Yeah, all kinds of addictions, breaking off, breaking off across your creation, breaking off strongholds, God, breaking it down, coming, coming in truth. In glory, in justice, in mercy, in grace, coming, flooding the earth, seeing signs and wonders, revealing to this generation and us the people, showing the world that you are who you say you are, witnessing miracles in the heavenly, signs coming from the sky. Yes, God. Yes, suddenly, ahas, we want to step into that supernatural realm with you where your manifest glory reveals all of heaven to our hearts, to our homes, to this generation, to the family, to the prayer needs across your creation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Paul.
prosper us in the way we should go. Lead us in truth. Guide us by the mighty hand of who you are. Truth and justice prevailing. We will not be intimidated. We won't shrink back. We won't be named among those who became faint-hearted. Strengthen our hands. Strengthen the feeble knees of your church. Hallelujah. The restoration of all things. Your bride making herself ready. Ready. <laughs> what a glorious time. What a glorious time and day. Thank you, God. Bless each one. Answer every prayer from the orphans to the widows to the homeless to the backsliders to the emotionally bound, to the mentally tormented, to the sick, weary, weak, lost, devastated, to those with hardened hearts, evil, wicked ways, to the rulers with self-control, the liars, the downcast, all into the earth, from the unborn babies to the seniors, from city to city, highway to highway, field to field, jungle to woods, marketplace, corporate, business, home. Thank you, Jesus. All of heaven. Yes, Lord. Seal and settle our prayers. No backsliders, no backsliding. Staying securely at your altar, the altar of our heart with you. Confessing our great need. Repenting of our sins. A mighty repentance revival. That's what we need. A repentance revival. If my people will humble themselves and pray. Repentance, confession. If my people will repent, will confess. If the intercessors will cry. If, if the prayer warriors, if the priest will face the wall and wail. If the saints will wake up and pray. If my people will confess, repent, will turn from their wicked ways, will deny the power of sin and loss and lies and abuse, will deny the laws of lawlessness and carelessness and reckless living and governmental control if my people oh, then you will heal you said my lord you will heal the land the land where we stand the land of our homes the land of our families the land of our nations the land of your people said you'd heal God orphanages families being given widows finding relief seniors getting comfort children being saved and rescued hearts being mended patients getting up getting out of those wheelchairs Rising from the bed, the sick bed, walking again, leaping. The lame will leap, they will dance. The lepers will get their hugs and be held. The downcast will find their recovery in you. They will no longer wander.
seal and settle our prayers. My dog is snoring away over here. <laughs> oh, you're so good to us, God. Thank you for hearing every cry in this earth, every voice, every sound. Your answers from heaven, heaven being open to release into the earth the answers, the rewards, the needs, the correction, the justice. Thank you, Jesus. We seal and settle these prayers, blessing one another, standing in faith, trusting you and believing you, agreeing with one another, answering our, the calling of you, listening out for your voice the way you speak, small, still, audible, loud, through music, through your written word, through dreams and visions, through prophecy, through someone else's voice, a friend, through a picture, through a visual, through peace, through just a knowing, a peace, a grace. Oh, thank you for the many ways you get our attention, God. Thank you. Rule and reign in our hearts. Victorious, commander-in-chief, captain, thank you, Jesus, conquering king. Yes, Lord. Bless your name. Give us the strength for all our responsibilities and then some. Strengthen every bit of our being. Recover anything that's been lost or stolen, Jesus. We stand in the grace and glory of who you are, witnesses of the testimony of faith, strengthen this day, armored up. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. There is no one like our God. I'll post that song here in a little bit. There is no one like our God. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Love you all. God's blessings. Thank you for joining in prayer. Continue to trust him through the day. Proclaim his name. Declare your healing. You know, declare your healing. I'll tell you, sometimes I just uh, do something by faith. He told me with the, when the, the cancer, he told me to drink an orange juice every day. He just, no one else told me that. God said, drink an orange juice every day. Thus saith the Lord. So obediently, he didn't say it would heal me. He never said anything like that. He just put on my heart and said, small, still voice, drink an orange juice every day. It was the Lord, and I've been doing it ever since. I didn't stop. He didn't tell me to stop. He didn't tell me it was doing it. Nothing like that. He just said to do it. He said, drink it every day, and that's what I've done. So listen out for him. Amen. He's not a man. We don't reduce him to man. Let's do what he says. Jesus used mud. He spat in mud and put it on the blind man's eyes. And he did it twice. Jesus, use what you have. Let God take that mustard seed. Use what you have. Let him in. To the provision that's been made that's what I did when I went for those treatments I didn't go alone I said God you're with me 
you're in this place with me. I didn't deny him the place for him to walk with me. Amen. All right. God's blessings. Love you all. Thank you so much. Have a blessed, Jesus-filled, bright and glorious, prospering day in everything you put your hands to and all that God, God has given you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to listen to God is good. Have a blessed day. Thank you.